Well, good morning. How are you all today? Welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. For those who may not know, <clears throat> um, well, we got a lot going on. I want to talk about a hey, uh, more shortages are coming. I suggest you take that seriously and stock up. I'll get back to that in a minute. You all saw how uh, uh, the current occupant hung the uh, transgender flag out there on the White House and, and uh, um, subjugated the American flag to the sides. Uh huh. Um, you may have seen that they put out, I covered a lot of this on the American Reversion Channel, I'll just mention it here because I want to get to the main topic. Um, you see that uh, NATO is, uh, is putting together some big massive uh, um, practice over there of 250 jets and 10,000 troops. Uh, war games to uh, to poke putin that's that's gonna that's gonna work out well i'm sure don't you think um and then uh america is uh, our government is is warning people to uh they're they're instituting an evacuation plan for americans out of taiwan well what could possibly uh be uh, at the root of that right um Things are happening. Should I say that again? When are things not happening? You know, but but I would suggest that there's something going on right now. You want to take a closer look at and do something. By the way, somebody asked, "Appeal to heaven." What's that cap, uh, Steve? Can can we buy that cap? Well, we're working on. That. Hey, I just got done uh, with the designs of a whole bunch of T-shirts. By the way, I'll go in and slide this in right here. Uh, with a whole bunch of new t-shirt designs. They're going to be available on the website probably within a couple of weeks, Stonemont t-shirts. Uh, and I just got done designing. This is not the Stonemont mug. You know, I, I hold this up and I talk about, you know, people want the Stonemont mug so you can join me in the you-know-what. What is the you know what, Steve? The weenie weeding, the getting rid of the weenies who are, are, are so fragile that even though they're, they're, they're working to survive the end of the world, uh, they are, are not tough enough to handle the fact that I, I slurp and swallow my coffee too loudly, in their opinion. Okay, but where I hold this up when I'm talking about the Stone Mount mug, this is not the Stone Mount mug. This is just a, a set that I got from Bass Pro, which I like. Uh, but I, I finished designing the Stonemont mug, and it is beautiful. It is beautiful. If I do say so myself, it's beautiful. And uh, so I'm ordering the, the, the mugs, um, and, you know, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully I, I hope this stuff will be available within the next couple of weeks because then I'm going on vacation for a while. I'll be back shortly after the 4th, probably. Um, but, but they'll either be ready and they'll either be available in a couple of weeks or maybe a week and a half after that, but they're coming up and the cup is beautiful. Okay. One more sip and then I'm going to get to this. I said several weeks ago that I saw shortages appearing in the stores that I shop at. I shop at Aldi and I shop at a, a chain called Hy-Vee. It's a big chain here in the Midwest. Uh, in different parts of the country have different different grocery stores. Um, I started seeing shortages in these stores that, that I hadn't been used to since the you know what, right? And um, uh, some a few things they were totally out of. They weren't totally out of a lot of things, but the inventory was real light. You know now we have seen the price of milk, the price of eggs, those kinds of things come back down. Uh, the price of canned peaches has come down a penny after going up 50 cents, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but I, I wonder, well, what, what in the world's going on uh, with these? And then we saw the, the, um, the problems with the ports at uh, L.A. and Long Beach. And they were, uh, they were having problems. They were getting stacked up. Ships weren't coming in to, to load. And now we see the, uh, the port of Seattle is shut down by union action, right? Who controls the unions? <coughs> dum, 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 right? Well, Alex, uh, who is the Democrat Party? Now, the, now, you know, it would go back and forth the other way, too. The unions control Democrats. Democrats control unions. It's an incestuous relationship. Always has been. 
But the unions shut down the Port of Seattle. Now, I've also seen a shortage of OTC meds. I don't know if you have in your area or not, but I have around here. When you couple that with the continued inflation, which is softening in some areas, not softening in many, and you have to be careful what they'll tell you about this. Hey, we got gas down a nickel, right? But the things that you buy every day, they're not coming down. They'll say, we've slowed inflation, which means inflation has stayed at the high point to which they took it up, right? <clears throat> We're seeing a collapse in the commercial real estate markets. We're seeing a, a now a very softening, I won't call it a collapse yet, but a, a real softening of the uh, residential real estate market. All of these things are about ready to have a devastating impact on millions of Americans. You know, the, the, and I talk about this stuff a lot over on the Prepping for Prosperity channel, but all of this goes together. Uh, we, have, we have come to the end of the, um, the moratorium on uh, student loan payments. Okay. We've come to the end. Now people are losing their houses because there was that moratorium on you know, mortgage payments and rent payments. They didn't have to pay their mortgages. They didn't have to pay their rent. rent. They didn't have to pay their student loans. And, you know, they didn't put that money back into an account and say, okay, I know the day's coming. I'm going to have to pay this. I'm going to have this money ready for it. No, they spent it. They, they increased their lifestyle. That's how these people got by. People wondered, how are these people getting by without working? That's how they got by. Well, all of that stuff came to an end. The, the, the mortgage and rent moratoriums came to an end some time back. But it takes a little while to get people out of their, you know, to, out of their houses. And that's a legal process. It takes a while and out of their apartments. Those things are starting to come home to roost. When you bring all of these things together, uh, I think we are in for uh, well, an interesting time is, is you know, to, to say the least, devastating time for many is, is probably not an exaggeration. Um, hopefully, it's not going to be a devastating time for you. And it's not a devastating time for people who are, um, are prepared, right? If you watch the one that I just put up um, a couple hours ago about trolls and barter and stuff like that, I showed a, a beautiful cut crystal uh, picture that a, a woman gave my great-grandfather in like 1908. Um, as partial payment for a sewing machine that she bought from him that that she couldn't afford and he accepted this this beautiful cut crystal pitcher that thing is so heavy you could knock out a horse with it and six matching glasses in payment for that now that that is the difference that is the difference between being prepared and not being prepared okay it, it's too bad. That woman needed something. She needed a sewing machine, to, to, I'm sure, to sew the clothes for her children. She didn't have the money to pay. Because why? Because she wasn't prepared. Because money is an important part of preparedness. Don't ever think that it's not. We have, there are too many people in the preparedness world that think that money is not important. Money is vital. Because money buys the stuff that you can have, that you need now. It buys equipment. It buys supplies. It buys, you know, the food, the meds, all the things that you need right now. And living in some kind of fantasy, futuristic world to where knowing how to make a teepee, you know, is going to come in, in good stead, uh, your mind's in the wrong place. Right now, money is what makes the world go round and it's going to either build your world or if you don't have any it's going to the lack of it's going to just destroy your world and then you will have an opportunity to go out in the woods and build a teepee out of you know saplings and you know your choice but that was the perfect example of somebody who was prepared my great-grandfather and someone who was not 
that that woman who had to trade away her her crystal set to get a sewing machine to make clothes for her kids. This has always been the case. There has always been, there have always been prepared people and and less than or not prepared, non-prepared people, okay? History, history is the story of the survival of those who were prepared or or the um, the increase and the increase in affluence, the success of those who were prepared and the failure or failing to survive of those who were not. That, that's what it all comes down to. And there's nothing that, that's more threatening than a lack of food. I mean, I don't have to tell you that. You know that. But still, I think a lot of people don't understand it. They don't understand it because they don't take it seriously. They've, I think we've started to see people take it more seriously here lately as inflation. You know, the lack of toilet paper turned more people into preppers than probably anything since that, that um, what was that, Doomsday Preppers show, right? Oh, no, toilet paper. And, and I don't necessarily make fun of that. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people made fun of the people uh, who were trying to get, get toilet paper saying, well, if that's the most important thing in your life, well, you know, toilet paper makes life just nicer, doesn't it? So I don't make fun of those people at all. It, it brought them to, uh, to understand the importance of preparing. And then you would go on I and mean, you couldn't find rice. Good, they were stocking up rice. You couldn't find pasta. Well, you know, I didn't have to buy any because I already had all that I needed. How much to prepare, Steve? Seven years, folks. Seven years. Steve, that's too much. How do I get there? You're not going to get there overnight, and don't worry about it. Don't make yourself go crazy over it. Do it a little bit at a time. Baby steps, right? The longest trip begins with a single step, right? A journey, whatever it is. Just do it and do it and do it and do it. But understand that these, these times coming up, we are, we are coming at to a point to where there are so many things you ever seen one of those those memes where there's somebody standing in the middle and, and all these arrows are sticking in towards them? That's that's it. I mean, there are so many threats now. Um, it's it's hard to keep track of all of them. But I'll tell you, I'll use an example. Um, one something that I used to to train on the people training me with martial arts. There were a lot of people that taught fancy blocks and parries. Maybe I should save this. I will save this. I'm going to put this on Patreon because if I put it up here, I'm going to get all sorts of people coming on and trying to talk about their favorite Bruce Lee story. Okay? <clears throat> Who never knew not much about Bruce Lee. I'll tell you a Bruce Lee story over there too. Those of you who are on Patreon, I mean, if you're not with us on Patreon, why not? There's so much more over there. It's down below. The link is down below. Only cost you a buck a month unless you want to come up to the higher level and we'd love to have you there. Um, do what you think is right for you, but come over. You'll benefit. But the thing is, is you know. You don't know what the threats are, but you know where you are. And you know what your situation is. And if you just think about those very basics, food, water, security, shelter, people, you know where you're short. And the, the very simple question to ask yourself is, how long could I last with what I have? And I would say that if that answer is less than two years, <clears throat> you better get to working at it. And if your answer is, well, somewhere between two years and seven years, well, then you need to start thinking about what do I do after two years? Okay. And the answer to that is to provide, to grow, to raise your own food. Are you set up for that? Are you ready for that? I put up one on, on the uh, Patreon channel. An old one that I did, one of my very first, is not available on YouTube anymore. It's over on Patreon where I, I talked about putting together your survival food. And it wasn't in these 25 or these five gallon buckets. It was food you buy at the store. And I gave, I showed everybody what I suggest you get. And I gave the prices. And somebody made the comment that says, wow, this shows you the importance of buying food and, and the quality of investment, if you put it in food. I said, that's exactly right. I've always said there's two things that you should invest in, food and firearms. 
and ammo. Those will always go up. And I think I think I might do a comparison, but go over and watch that one too. First off, it'll help you. I tell you exactly how to build your food stores. And then go over and listen to what I said I paid for them. I think that was like four years ago. And compare it. If you don't know what inflation has done to you, that's going to bring it home. Okay, so watch that. Anyway, prepare. What they're doing in Ukraine, what they're doing in China, what they're doing around the world, what they're doing at the border, what they're doing with Trump, what they're doing with our economy, it's all coming together into potentially a perfect storm that is going to wipe people out if they're not ready. If you're ready, you're going to be fine. If you're not ready, get ready. But stock this. We're, we're seeing more, more interruptions of our, our supplies, our food supplies, other supplies. Okay, we've, se we've seen, and I've mentioned this before, um, all of the, the food processing plants that caught on fire, all the cows that died, all the poultry that was killed, Tough times are coming. You need to be ready for it. Stock up. Keep track of what's going on in the world. I forgot to tell you, if you want the master plan, I'll give you the master plan of how to be ready for anything. And it's in my books, the Stonemont series. Many of you have read these. Many of you have read these multiple times. Somebody just said they got, I, more than one person has told me they've read this through five times, the whole series. And every time they read through it, they get something new out of it. They miss the times before because it's so full. And I say, if I, if I made videos for 20 years, I'd never be able to cover in what I've already covered in these books in detail. It's the reversion, the revival, the renewal, an appeal to heaven, the blessings of freedom, the hostages of fortune. Yes, I'm working on the seventh one right now. But they're available on Amazon in paperback or, or Kindle. The link is down below. Or they're available directly from me through our, our website at stonemont.us. Stonemont.us. Uh, read those. If you want to be secure, if you want to, you know, people write me all the time. I was strong on this, but I never thought about the other things that you mentioned in those books. And now I'm working on those, and now I feel a lot better. That's your total guide on how to prepare for, how to survive, and how to rebuild after pretty much anything, any catastrophe in your life or the world. So get those. Stock up, guys. Hard times coming. Remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. So prepare well today because... I want you to live well tomorrow just like I intend to live well tomorrow, and I'll probably see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.